can you hear me good yes of course i can hear you and we can see you also so before we begin for today's session i like to give a brief introduction of yours to the new audience you had addressed the mba healthcare students earlier so today we have a different set of audience let me just start with your introduction first so okay. professor francisco is a medical doctor a public health specialist who graduated from the faculty of medicine in plan uh i hope i'm pronouncing it correct <laughs> charles university prague he was a member of the senate of the faculty of medicine in plan he did his masters in public health from the university of porto and was a student of phd program in international studies at iscte lisbon um, <laughs> he has been a consultant for international and scientific projects at cespu and european um, which is uh, europe and professor of human physiology at the polytechnic institute of health of the north he has been a medical advisor at uh, matapalo so sa and a clinical director and um, he was also the president of uflom parish assembly and an honorary consultant of the czech republic and the topic for his talk today would be eu and global health so over to you professor francisco uh you can start sharing your screen yes i will let me one second please uh, no is not this maybe this one yes okay mm -hmm. can you see my presentation now mm, yes we are about to see yes it is on its way yeah yes fine Yes, we can see it now. It is okay. Yes, it's okay. And if I, and if I change my first slide, do you see? Do you saw the yes, change? Yes, yes, yeah, the slides okay. are changing as well. Perfect. Yes. So yes, fine. So you may begin. <clears throat> yes, I will. But let me first of all say good evening to all of you, and in your name, Dr. Miknashi, to to thank you for the invitation, and also to thank to Professor Stefano for this kind invitation to be here and to be part of this important and well-structured course to the students of Chicago University and the other partners on this matter. So today I'm here to, to talk about it, uh, about the theme of the European uh, Union and global health basically basically trying to make a brief summary of the new global health strategy or the european union external health policy strategy uh, however I, I could not talk about this subject without addressing a historical context and some ideas that are in the origin of this new strategy as you may know in a pre-covid uh, 19 uh, period health in the European Union was considered a strictly national competence. However, since 2010, there was already been a global health strategy for the European Union, which I will discuss later. I will do a remark on that, but uh, which basically never had such a high political commitment as this new strategy that we'll talk today uh, and that we know today have it. So please, I will change for the first slide. If there is any problem during the, the, the sequence of slides or if you don't hear me proper, please let me know, okay? Okay, sure. Okay, perfect. I, I, I'm not seeing if there is some question. Perhaps the best way is to, to do my presentation and in the end, the, the students or whatever wants can make me some questions or we can discuss some, some theme. I, yes. I don't know what you prefer. Yeah, they have been informed that they can keep writing in the chat box whatever questions they have. And we'll take it up at the end of the presentation. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, the COVID-19 pandemic shake a lot and had a huge impact in Europe, not of course in, in, only in Europe, but in the rest of the world. And this impact was a political, social and economical level, as we all know. So, but in Europe, it happened 
that the virus disintegrated its political and foundational structure of the European Union. That is, if you remember or if you know it about it, uh, the countries of the European Union acted in their own way uh, and according to their own interests in the first part of the COVID-19 pandemic. They closed borders individually, they individually searched and purchased for material and material goods, etc. So this initial dismantling was a huge inconvenience and a concern for the European Union leaders, who soon reacted to this by creating and activating joint action mechanisms, purchasing material and support for the most vulnerable and needy countries, of course. The same happened or was an example at the beginning of the vaccine purchase period with the powerful countries like Germany and France taking the lead in the negotiation without any consideration for the other countries of the European Union, in which and why the European Commission acted by taking the lead and the initiative of an agreement and purchasing oblig obligations joints. The truth is that European Union vaccine diplomacy strategy for the procurement, equitable distribution, participation in the COVAX initiative and bilateral distribution with developing countries has been a new success in the final stage. So all these events and had a great impact uh, and the great impact of the pandemic, of course, on the structure of the societies led the European Commission to realize the need for a strong, a cohesive, sustainable and long term health policies. So it is and it was also in 2020 that the process of the structuring, structuring the strategy for the European Health Union began. And therefore, several legislative proposals were launched within the aim for transforming the European Union into European health, into a European health for health, namely. So these were the, the main steps for this European Union for Health. Preparedness and response measures for the public health threats, pharmaceutical strategy in order to ensure the supply of accessible and initiative, uh, innovative medical products. And finally, a European cancer plan to work together to improve cancer prevention, treatment and monitoring. I will talk about it later and we shall record and shall remember the what our president of the European Commission said in the end of the 2020 uh, back and what makes the pathway for this uh, European Health Union. So let me do a pause here and just to warn that there was been a strategy, as I mentioned in the beginning, for the rule of European Union in global health for more than a decade. The, this first strategy began in 2007 in a document called Together for Health. And it is very justified due to the SARS-CoV epidemic back in 2003, as you remember, and the great advance, of course, of the globalization and its effects all, all over the world. The structure of this new agenda was based on a worldwide improvement of health, reduction of disparities, and protection against global health threats. However, this agenda, and strategy did not receive great success, perhaps due to alienation from political leaders or even enthusiasm. I advise you to read this article that I mentioned here um, that gives us a, a, a perspective about this agenda back in 2010 and the, the, some problems or achievements that that uh, this agenda tried to put uh, uh, on, on the field, but had no succeed. So on May 2021 in Rome, the European Commission and Italy, they share the G20 
and co-hosted the Global Health Summits. And as you can imagine, this meeting was a very, an enormous importance on, on that time. Not only because of the moment it represented, but because for the first time, G20 meeting was held solely dedicated for the team of health. And in this case, in particularly to the global health. It's and about a uh, huge example of uh, health diplomacy, as you can imagine. So leaders of the G20 committed to a series of actions to accelerate the end of COVID back on that time, of course, crisis, wherever the and be prepared for the future pandemics. These were the main objectives of this global health summit. The summit was also an opportunity for the G20 and of course the invited leaders, heads of international and regional organization and representatives of global health bodies, because there were not only political leaders on these summits, to share lessons learned from the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic till 2021. The leaders adopted in the final stage a Rome Declaration committing to a common principles to overcome COVID-19 and to prevent and prepare for future pandemics. So this is the statement of, of this important global health summit in 2020, 2021 in Rome, mentioned by the president of the European Commission, as you can see it. So the Rome Declaration, it, it has 16 principles and I will, I will not initiate them, but I would like to highlight four principles that are also aligned with uh, the new European Union strategy for global health that I will address you in minutes. So these principles were foster all of society and health in all policies approaches support low and middle income countries to build expertise, develop local and regional manufacturing capacities. And this is an important one because I will talk in the next slide about it. And as support for existing preparedness and prevention structures, invest in the worldwide health and care workforce. As you may know, this is a huge and hot topic, the lack of health and care workforce all over the world. So in 2021, later March, there was a, also a huge global health conference made by the Portuguese presidents of the, the, the commission and of the Portuguese presidents of the European Union. And the, the, this global health conference was aligned with the strategy of the European Union and Africa. And I must say that it was an important one because as you remember, after this Rome declaration and this global health conference, the president Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, went to Senegal in Africa to promote the first, um, the first capacity for the production of vaccines and another medical materials. So this is an important also strategy of the external policy for health of the European Union. Well, the pandemic shows the importance of coordination among European countries to protect people health, of course, both during the crisis time and of course in the normal times that we live. And we can tackle underlying health conditions, invest in strong health systems, and train the healthcare workforce, of course. The European Health Commission is, or the European, the European can you listen, can you hear me, Professor? Uh, yes, we can hear ah, you. Perfect. The European Commission is building a strong European Health Union, as I mentioned before, and that was presented uh, in November 2022, so six months ago, barely, and in which all European countries prepare and respond together to health crisis. And the key initiatives 
for this European Health Union are crisis preparedness, European Health Emergency Preparedness and Response Authority, the pharmaceutical strategy, European Health Data Space, Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, the state of health preparedness, and the global health security. So, <clears throat> to improve the global health security and to deliver better health for all in a changing world, the Commission adopted the new European Union Global Health Strategy in November 2022, as I mentioned. This strategy uh, positions global health as an essential pillar of the European Union external policy affair. So, as the external dimension of the European Union, the strategy is designed to guide the European Union action for ensuring better preparedness and response to wealth threats. So, this European health, global health strategy is based basically on two dimensions. First, the external dimension of the European Health Union, and the other one is the global gateway that gives all together the global health strategy of the European Union. And this global gateway, only to address you, it's the European model for trusted connectivity in partner countries in the long term and in align with the European Union's interests and values. Values that they are rule of law, human rights, and international norms and standards. It's about a smart, clean, and secure investment in quality infrastructure, connecting goods, people, and services around the world in a sustainable way. These are the principles and rules of this global gateway strategy of the global uh, the European Union. So the experiences of the recent years, as I mentioned, particularly the COVID-19 pandemic, has highlighted as a never before that health has no borders, as you understand, as you may know. It's a global common good. So global health is an essential pillar of the European health of European Union external policy, a critical sector geo geopolitically, and a central to the European Union open strategy autonomy. So more than ever before, global health is being impacted by the triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity, and pollution, with a particularly heavy burden on most vulnerable countries and people. So at the same time, new opportunities linked to areas like research, digitalization, ever rising. So it is important, a global health strategy, but there is a massive and unfinished agenda in global health. So there is three main uh, global health priorities in this European Union uh, global health strategy. The first is better health and well being, promoting drivers of good health, addressing root causes of health, and particular attention to women, girls, and people in vulnerable situations. And these are very important because these are the, the main pillars that will guide the strategies and the aims or goals of this strategy. So another priority is advancing universal health coverage that, as you know, it's very important and also was celebrated three or four days ago in the world's uh, Health World Day in 7 of April. More equitable primary health care systems, more capacity to meet health emergency needs, leveraging digitalization and research, and of course, addressing workforce imbalances. And finally, the third priority is combating health threats, including pandemics. And here, a very important approach of one health approach and control of antimicrobial uh, resistance. Of course, 
this European health glo global health strategy has a huge focus on one health dimension about people, animals and environment, as you may know. And at least I experienced that in Chitkara University last December, there was signed a huge protocol of collaboration between an association that link European Union and India in the promotion and defense of One Health approach. So these are priorities that are aligned not only in European Union countries, but also strategically and geopolitical aligned with another countries in the world. So also the new global cooperation and partnerships are an important dimension of this strategy. A stronger, stronger WHO leading an effective global health system. For the European Union, it's very important to not change the rule of the WHO, but to be a full observer and to give the governance for health to WHO. So the global governance without duplication and strong political attention to health and increased impact through innovative finance, pooling funding mechanisms and co-investments. Let me say that for the European Union, they paid a great attention to the new mechanisms of governance and leadership in this strategy. And if you are careful to read the documents, you can see that they are exhaustive in the terms of explanations and details, especially with the articulation with international and multinational organizations and institutions. So I will not get or go into the matter here, as there is not enough time, of course, and I would like to be getting into more specific or aspects of the former international um, relations. But to achieve um, to achieving this strategy, goals requires a more joined up way of working with the Commission and with the member states and partners. So this calls for reinforced coordination to help achieve the priorities of this strategy and implement a true health in our policies governance. So WHO is, is, is totally indispensable. Uh, cornerstone of the multilateral health system for the European Union. At the same time, it is also revealed areas of certain shortcoming uh, for the strategy. So this strategy should aim at ensuring further strengthening of WHO leadership, effectiveness, efficiency, accountability, and align European Union and WHO priorities. So if you have time, and of course, I will share in the end with Professor Stefano the, this, this presentation and also some literature that I would like to, to read, to read the, the document of the global, the European health, the European Union global health strategy. It's very important to understand the, this governance and leadership strategy of the European Union. So, European uh, Union key initiatives and support that will give the mechanisms or that will give the, the, um, the field for the priorities that we talk about. Integrated surveillance mechanisms, pandemic funds for health security and vulnerable countries, global health joint undertaking and clinical trials, a very important uh, initiative and support of the priorities is this one not only in the European Union countries but all over the world and of course more of initiatives like those aligned with One Health development initiative medical countermeasures to address antimicrobial resistance support Gavi rule out COVID-19 vaccines and of course the promotion, research and development to a coalition for epidemic preparedness and innovations. On the other end, 
WHO Universal Health Coverage Partnerships, of course, training, recruiting and retaining health air, healthcare workers and support Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, the three or three of the main uh, health priorities all over the world. And of course, to be aligned with the first priority, supporting United Nations Populations Fund Supplies Partnership to female sexual and reproductive health and rights. So an ambitious global health strategy is crucial in a world where disease and health have no borders, as you know, and where health is, an is, is essential to protect the well-being of people, guarantee the stability of societies and deliver sustainable development in a complex geopolitical landscape, as you may understand. So this global health strategy of the European Union as will have for sure a huge impact, not only in the European Union countries, but of course, all over the world. And with those countries, institutions that will want, that want to align with these priorities and key initiatives that are promoted by this global health strategy. So I would like to end my presentation, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, of course, it's, it will be only a brief summary of the initiatives or the priorities and the contextualization of this global health uh, strategy agenda for you to take it during your global health management and healthcare systems. But I hope you be you appreciate it, of course, but be able to find more uh, literature and read more about this topic in the next days. So thank you very much. I don't know, Professor, if you want to, to make some yeah. uh, uh, um, remark about it, or I'm, uh, of course, I'm able and free to your, to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, so that was a very nice, uh, brief, but crisp presentation from you. And I'm very sure uh, it would have given a different, a new perspective to people who are attending it and they would have gained by uh, this presentation. So we have uh, one question from Professor Stefano. But before that, let me just summarize what is it that you covered in today's presentation, right from impact of COVID-19 to you talked about Global Health Summit in Rome, uh, in which the Rome Declaration was made. And uh, you also talked about the Global Health Conference in 2021, which was held in Portugal in Lisbon. And after that, you went on to describe the European Health Union and its priorities or objectives and also talked about EU global health strategy, which is from 2022 to 2030. And the three priorities of global health, that is first being the better health and well-being. And then, of course, um, advancing in the universal health coverage and finally combating health threats like AMR and also uh, how to be better prepared for pandemics. Then, of course, finally, we went on to do one health um, uh, priority of the EU, which in which the health of people, animal and environment is interconnected, uh, very nicely explained by you and other key initiatives of European Union, for example, uh, with WHO, how universal health coverage partnership is there and then the rollout of COVID-19 training of healthcare workers and including CEPI, that is Coalition of Epidemics Preparedness Innovation. So I think that was extensive, but still you had uh, put it in a very nice and manner so that we could cover in half an hour a lot. So before we uh, take up questions, let me take first question from Professor Stefano, which says, um, according to you, which will be the biggest challenge during the implementation of European global health strategy? Well, thank you. And of course, it's a very good question from Professor Stefano. <laughs> I think there is not only one challenge, but there will be a lot of challenges during this implementation. But the, for my point of view, for this phase, of course, what I can see is 
the, the important position on governance and leadership that the European, well, the European Union gave to WHO. As you remember and may know, during the, pandem the pandemic, during the COVID-19, WHO was, uh, was put in a position for, we, uh, from some countries like United States or other countries that did not believe on their leadership. And European Union shows with this strategy and with this document that the health, the world health leadership should be based and guaranteed by the guidance of WHO. And for the other hand, I think it is important, as I mentioned in the presentation, this point of ori political orientation and guidance for cooperation of the European Union in European getaway. There are principles that will guide the European health strategy uh, in, in the external policy. So the European Union will support activities outside the European health context or countries, but respecting always the economy, the populations, the cultural, the place that is based on. So I think this European getaway, it's a very good principle of this implementation, but it is also a challenge, of course. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we move on to the next question, which comes from Dr. Arunjit. He says that um, during COVID pandemic, in the beginning, we saw Italy had maximum mortality. How did EU pool its resources and help more affected countries like Italy? Yes, let me say this is a, a very interesting uh, question because the first three, four months of the, of the pandemic here in Europe were a, a, a huge example of uh, misunderstandings and how a, a union do not work. As you remember, in the beginning, as and I mentioned that, each country in the beginning of the pandemic started to work on his way, on, on his interests. So, we start to close borders, we start to do procurement of medical materials for not for the European Union, but for each country, etc, etc. And there were a lot of examples in Europe about it. I can mention that Czech Republic, for example, um, put its material, medical material that was supposed to be uh, send it to Italy for four weeks in an airport waiting for a decision. We, or Italy, received material from Russia saying from Russia with love to Italy and no other European country sent any medical material to Italy when the mortality was high. And it was the reason that some methods apart or from the start of the pandemic, the European Commission, of course, saw that everything was wrong and started to make a joint action and started to put the European Union in order to do it. So the beginning was very turbulent and very bad as an example for the European Union, but in the end and after, the European Union showed that they worked together and for the common wealth and the best for their population and for those that are more vulnerable. Yes, Professor, I think uh, when COVID-19 hit us, most of the countries were not prepared for anything like that. They had never experienced anything like that. So it took them a while to 
make policies and adjust to you know how to tackle it so obviously that was that was true for europe as well of so, course but, uh, but but let me say some remark about it yes. that is true and is is the cause of that that i mentioned but the thing is the european union already had mechanisms to support that initiatives together but they didn't use it and after only after three or four months they start to use them and they start to see that each country is uh, is working on their way so it was really important to 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 think about it what happened on that days but the the reason is of course is that no one was prepared for so strong impact of a pandemic okay thank you another question is related to you know if you could tell us how uh, what are the some of the tangible achievements of eu in the field of global health what achievements can we talk about so far in in terms of uh, global health well um i'm afraid i'm not remember all of them of course but the the european health or the european union already work of course in the promotion of the global health and the most tangible ones are of course the finance of some research and the develop, development of some materials and medical medical goods like vaccines like medication or even the promotion and guarantee of these of these uh, documents that for the preparedness and response to health pandemics so i think these are the most tangible uh, achievements of the european global health good so i think one final question i have for you is again from professor stefano who says that how eu and india can work together in the field of health so what are the possibilities of working together i think there are multiple multiple one india is a huge country has i don't know but much three or maybe two times more the population of the european union and has an important economy and also important demography and population so as i mentioned in my presentation I was in India in Chitkar University in the last December and in an important conference about one health approach. And there was the civil society, the academia, and these institutions, they made a progress. They made an association between European Union, a consortium between different, different institutions and India that will promote the one health approach. And this is one of the multiple examples that I can give about it. But of course, European Union and India, they can promote on the research and development of materials, medical materials and medical goods, of course. India is one of the larger and principal and important producers of vaccines all over the world and medications. So I see multiple and infinite hypotheses of this articulation for the promotion of global health between European Union and India, for sure. Okay, any more questions from audience? If you have <coughs> any more questions, we can ask. Or I think then with that, we will have to end the meeting then. Okay, so we're not having let, any- Let me just, I, I see another question here saying if european union having an agency like cdc atlanta which will be yes european union as the yes. ecdc the european control or center for disease control ecdc okay so and is as the same field related and activities as cdc in atlanta uh, actually this is one of the most important organizations for the con disease control and makes the policies for the disease control in Europe. And also, of course, it's aligned with the CDC and also with the 
Africa CDC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Francisco. So I think with that, we will end the meeting. Uh, before we end, again, once again, a lot of thanks to you for finding time and being with us and enlightening us on various aspects of EU and global health. And I'm sure the audience would have gained a lot from today's session. So uh, I think that's all from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much. So with that, we are oh, going so to end the meeting. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you and good luck for your studies. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.